McNary Regional Hospital closed, so McNary doesn't have a hospital anymore. And so when you don't have a hospital, you don't have jobs. And when you don't have jobs, you don't have money. And so there's become this real dividing line between rural and urban America, between Democrats and Republicans. And I think that's why we're seeing so much animosity. We're just, there's too much animosity in this country. And I think one way we can alleviate it is by helping some of these rural communities. And so that brings me to another issue, which is rural broadband. That's something that comes up a lot around here. Even Marshall Blackburn has been paying at lip service for a long time. You go to these rural communities and they don't have, they're not connected to the world. And so there can't be investment there. So kids, when they graduate high school, the first thing they do is leave. So I think we need a real national rural broadband initiative. There's a thing called the Universal Service Fund that was intended to create, at first it was to get telephones to people in this country, and it still exists, and it has some, it has a bearing on broadband, but I think we need to increase it and audit it and make sure that we're spending it in the right places and make a decision as a country that broadband's a public good and we have to get it to these places. And I think in that program, there can be a jobs program in these rural communities to put people to work. And I say, let's put our kids to work so our grandkids will stay. So those are three pretty big ones. It's it's jobs, it's health care, and it's rural broadband. And, you know, obviously there are a lot of other issues. Uh, medical marijuana is a big issue, especially around Fort Campbell. The opioid problem is serious here in Tennessee. And I think if we could legalize medical marijuana around here, we would see the opioid deaths go down and we'd have a way for people to treat their pain. And it would also help the economy. So that's something that I try to talk about as much as I possibly can. I'm a huge believer that we need to decriminalize and deschedule marijuana. It shouldn't be scheduled the same way as heroin or other serious drugs. And that's something that I think we can do for our people, both for economic and health reasons. So you were a previous two-time contestant on The Amazing Race, uh, and you've sort of I was. played that up a little bit in the way you've framed your campaign, The Amazing Race Through the District. That's right. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience meant in sort of forming who you are and what kind of candidate you are? Absolutely. So I was on... The Amazing Race twice with my best friend, Zev, who was the first racer ever on the autism spectrum. Uh, It was an incredible experience. We met a lot of great people and we traveled the world. And one of the things that we took away from it was that wherever you go, whether we were in Vietnam, Cambodia, Australia, China, India, people are people. People wanted to help us. And so that's what we've carried with us through this race, through the district and through this campaign. People are people. And when you get out there and you talk to people and you look them in the eye, we realize that we have more in common than we realize. And so that's the message I'm really trying to carry with me is that we have more in common than we realize. We, we spend all day long arguing with each other online and we watch the news and everybody's yelling at each other about the wedge issues. But at the end of the day, I really do believe that we have more in common than we think. So having that conversation, that tough conversation with the people who don't agree with me about every single thing, that's one of the things that I enjoy the most about this process. I tell the story about how I have a neighbor named Glenn who's probably not going to vote for me. But I sit down and I talk to him all the time. And I think as long as we're talking to each other and listening to each other, we're going to be okay. If we can't get back to that, we're in trouble. So the amazing race is something that I bring up. It obviously doesn't qualify me for anything at all. But the lesson of the amazing race is one that unites us, one that shows us that we're all on this thing together. And that's something that I really, really try to carry with me wherever I go. I also very much appreciate the puns that you use (laughs) in your campaign. (laughs) So both canoe as in boat and also canoe focusing on new. (laughs) Yes. You have to work with what you've got, Kelly. Yeah, it seems like you're you're having a lot of fun in campaigning too, fun making videos and, and fun coming up with slogans. Can you talk a little bit about sort of that? We don't talk much about that aspect of campaigning, but maybe what what sort of driving that piece of it and, and what kind of team you have around you helping with that sort of thing? Absolutely. I, I really do believe that you have to keep it fun. One of the first people I talked to when I started thinking about doing this was the now Nashville mayor. David Briley, and he told me to keep it fun. That was his his first thing. So, you know, obviously there are a lot of serious issues that we're talking about that we're dealing with. But I think if you keep it fun, if you if you make it something that people are interested in, that shines through. So I really did want to keep it fun. I, we've surrounded ourselves with some really smart young interns and people, and I, I want young people to feel like this is their campaign too. And and that's how we've tried to do this from the beginning. So you know, we're sort of telling a story here. You know, this is a story of. I just stood up because I felt like there was a need, and I I hope that that's something somebody 
out there can see themselves in and, and wants to root for. And so we're just trying to be as authentic as possible and show people who we are and, and what we're doing. And, you know, hopefully that's something that people will, will that will resonate with people. So, you know, again, fun is it's important to, to have fun because you're putting so many miles on the car. You're going out to so many different events. And if you're not having fun, then what are you really doing here? You know, and to me, taking on this challenge of bringing people together and showing people that, you know, that letter next to my name doesn't define me. I I do enjoy that part of it. And then it feels really important. And so I think as long as you're enjoying the work, good things will happen. One thing that I always appreciate as someone who's in a very blue district is knowing ways that I can get involved in red districts. And it's great on your website that you make it obvious that there are remote volunteering opportunities. So maybe you could mm-hmm. talk about some of those for our listeners who may want to help out from far away. Absolutely. Well, it starts with my first thought here is that basically the real dividing line in this country, in my opinion, is between special interests and the people. And special interests have had a hold on this district for a very long time. There's a laundry list of of big industries that have had a hold on Marsha Blackburn from big telecom, the big pharma, the big oil, all that stuff. So what I say is the way we take this district back from a few special interests is through a million little efforts. Everything everybody does matters. Every phone call they make, every door they knock, every tweet, every Facebook message, every postcard they send, it all really matters. So the things that people can do from afar that aren't here in the district, the two big ones that come to mind are virtual phone banking. You can become a phone banker from your couch. You don't even have to leave your house. All you have to do is email ben at canoeforcongress.com and and anyone else in other campaigns that you might be interested in, they can get you set up with this too. But we we really do need the help. So ben at canoeforcongress.com, he would get you set up with a script and some phone numbers to call and even 10 calls every few days or every week or so that stuff goes a long way. We have about 200 people signed up to do that. If 200 people make 10 calls a week, that's 2,000 calls a week. That goes a really, really long way. And 10 calls, it's about a minute a call, generally speaking. A lot of the people aren't even going to be home. Some of the numbers will be, be disconnected. A big part of it is cleaning data for us. That's really, really helpful. So, you know, phone banking is one thing. And then the other thing is postcards. We have a group that's doing postcards to primaries. There's postcards to voters in the general election. And basically, you sign up to write postcards to people in the district to say, here's why you should vote for Justin. They make little drawings on them. They use different colored pens to make them eye-catching. That stuff goes a really, really long way because we're trying to build grassroots momentum here. And we, we have done that over the course of the past year plus. And those postcards show that there are real people out there who care about what we're doing here, that care about this campaign. And so postcards and virtual phone banking is stuff. It doesn't matter where you are. You can help us out in our little campaign here in Tennessee 7th District. We're trying to do something that nobody thinks we can do here. And the way that we do that, especially when we're going to get outspent by a guy like Mark Green, who has already loaned himself $700,000 and is trying to buy the seat, the way that we overcome that is through the energy of a lot of people. And we have over 1,200 volunteers. We've raised all this money from a lot of different small-dollar donors, and I'm proud of that. That's the only way I want to do this. That's why I'm not taking any PAC money or special interest money because it's far more important to me to run this campaign the right way, to take the path of most resistance, and to be able to look my daughter in the face when I tuck her in at night. So we need help. And your primary is coming up pretty quickly here on August Mm -hmm. 2nd. So Tennessee just has to be different and have a Thursday primary for some reason. (laughs) Right. Always being different. All right. And then the general, of course, is in November. Is there Anything else that you want to make sure that our listeners know about you or your campaign? Sure. So I got into this a little over a year ago because I felt like there was a need. And again, you know, this is not something I grew up wanting to do, but I have a two-year-old daughter at home. And I just felt like in this moment, we all have to do everything we possibly can. After Marsha Blackburn declared for Senate, three other guys jumped into this race seeing an opportunity. And since then, one has dropped out. So that's how this primary started. But I just want people to know that I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a union member, I'm here for the right reasons, and I'm here to put people first. And we've been working really, really hard over the course of the past year plus. And when November comes, the work will have only just begun. The other thing that I want to say is, you know, I've been endorsed by Indivisible and the Women's March. The things that I believe, you know, I believe we need to stand for, we need to speak up for our ideals. I'm a pretty progressive guy. I want to have the conversation with people who don't agree with me about everything, but I'm also not afraid to speak my mind. And so I hope people will get to know our campaign because I think 
Democrats especially, we've lost a lot of elections recently. And I think a big part of that is because we've been afraid to nominate people who are going to excite people. And so far, we've seen that this campaign has excited a lot of people. Young people are seeing themselves in it. And so I hope that we can keep this grassroots momentum going. And to do that, we need the help of a lot of different people. All right. Excellent. And we will put links to your website and your social media on our website so that people can find you. Uh, and it's always a pleasure speaking to a fellow Northwestern grad. So, yes. Thanks so you. much. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kelly. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Two Broads Talking Politics. Our theme song is called Are You Listening? off the album Elephant Shaped Trees by the band Imunari. And we're using it with express permission of the band. Our logo and all original artwork is by Matthew Wefflin and is done expressly for Two Broads Talking Politics. We can be found on our website at twobroadstalkingpolitics.com. You can reach us by email at twobroadstalkingpolitics at gmail.com, on Twitter at Two Broads Talk, on Facebook and Instagram, and you can support us on patreon.com. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and anywhere podcasts are found. If you are interested in advertising on Two Broads Talking Politics, please email us at twobroadstalkingpolitics at gmail.com.